Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Limbach, producer of the Pharma Voice Webcast Network, and I'll be your moderator today. Welcome to our event entitled Medical Storytelling, Combining High Science and High Emotion for High Impact, brought to you by Pharma Voice in partnership with our good friends at Avant Healthcare. We have an outstanding crowd today with executives from across the industry. Thank you for investing the time to attend. We'll certainly do our very best to make it worth your while. We have a very knowledgeable trio of experts with us today to help us understand how you can transform your medical education content for maximum effect. We're happy to have Todd Wright, Senior Vice President, Avant Healthcare. Todd's joined by Philippe Vitat, Executive Medical Director at Avant Healthcare. And finally, Susan Bertocci, Group Creative Director at Avant Healthcare. Based on the excellent turnout today, it's clearly an area of interest. And based on our esteemed panel, it promises to be an extremely informative session, and I know I'm looking forward to it. Todd is going to start off the presentation, and we'll hear from all three of our presenters. Immediately after that, we'll have some Q&A time to address the questions submitted by the audience. Todd, you have the floor. Thanks, Dan. Uh, before I get started, I realized a few minutes ago we have a Southerner, a Frenchman, and a Bostonian uh, moderating this uh, webinar. So. We probably should have had some kind of translation button built in here. If you guys have a problem understanding this, please feel free to, to ask us questions and we'll be happy to respond. So uh, let's get started. Um, everything we do here at Avon is centered around what we like to call uh, our trifecta. Trifecta being the, our science, strategy, and creative. So all of this really starts, though, with strategy. And I know, you know, we, we throw that word around a lot, and, and strategy is a big word and has many different meanings to different people. What we mean by strategy is quite simply um, having an intimate understanding of where you and your brand are and where you're needing to go. Um, you know, we take a look, a, a very close look at the brand attributes. We understand the competitive landscape and the marketplace environment um, so that we can help the brands we partner with uh, perform better. Um, First and foremost, we get a handle on strategy and then apply it through, med uh, through our medical education efforts across the different channels uh, that we leverage. So that's a little bit about strategy. Science, this is where the rubber hits the road with us. We have a, a, a tenured staff of medical experts who dig deep into the different therapeutic areas we support to understand not only the science, but also uh, the available and relevant, and being the important word here, clinical data that uh, assist us in telling your uh, brand story. Finally, our creative team, who I personally like to refer to as our creative geniuses, takes the strategy and marries it with the science to create an impactful <laughs> medical uh, education uh, event. Because let's face it, we can have the best data in the world and we can communicate that data in the best way possible, but if it's not memorable, then you know our customers will soon and very quickly forget that data. So. Enough of me yapping. I'm going to turn things over to Philippe and Susan so that they can explain in detail how this tri trifecta brings medical storytelling to life. Philippe? Thank you, Todd. Now, does this look familiar to you? Let's face it. This is too often the approach to presenting life, life science. But let's be honest. It could actually use a little bit more life, don't you think? Well, we're about to show you just how medical storytelling does that. But first, what is medical storytelling? Medical storytelling is the fusion of high science and high emotion that creates high impact for your intended audiences, persuading and motivating them to action in the process. It aims to guide the beliefs and behaviors of healthcare professionals with science-driven narratives reinforced by emotion. Your content deserves better than being buried under a barrage of bullet points on crowded PowerPoint slides. You cus your customers deserve better too. Medical storytelling takes your compelling data and enhances them with an emotional human element. We engage their left brain with facts and inspire their right brain with creativity. This fusion provides memorable content that's clinically relevant and emotionally compelling. Now, let's see how it works. Medical storytelling aligns science, strategy, and creativity 
to develop compelling and compliant content that drives behavioral changes. And we accomplish this in four phases. First, we discover how your customers currently think, identify knowledge gaps, and isolate key opportunities. This phase consists of evaluating the competitive landscape, curating clinical data, understanding your brand's position and objectives, validating customer segments, and leveraging therapeutic insights and differentiating factors. Second, we prioritize the desired be beliefs and behaviors of your customers, which are to be summarized in a document we like to call the content blueprint. We accomplish this phase by conducting working sessions with, with all key stakeholders, assessing current beliefs and barriers, integrating relevant insights, and then developing out the content blueprint. But more on this in a moment. Next, we consider how we'd like to change those beliefs so that we can target and tone your messaging accordingly, and we craft a science-driven narrative with visual and emotional impact. Here, we create, uh, sorry, we, we integrate evidence-based science with a compelling narrative for high-impact story, give the story a powerful visual identity, and connect emotionally with the audience. And last, we extend the storyline across multiple channels to change beliefs, overcome barriers, and incite action. Now, the content blueprint is exactly what it sounds like, an evidence-based, strategy-focused framework that ensures your medical story is built upon a solid scientific foundation. No one knows your customers better than you do. The content blueprint distills that knowledge. What do they think now? What do you want them to think? And what do you want them to do? Medical storytelling closes that knowledge gap to activate behavior change. Now, as illustrated here, the content blueprint is a comprehensive document that maps out all current beliefs, future beliefs, desired behaviors, and barriers relevant to your brand strategy. Desired behaviors are anchored in relevant current beliefs that need to be changed or reinforced, and in some cases, even created from scratch, and future beliefs that will drive desired behaviors. Barriers are obstacles that deter turning uh, current beliefs into future beliefs and desired behaviors. The content blueprint drives the storyline, and the desired behaviors provide the focus on how to frame your medical story. Now, let me turn it over to Susan, who's going to tell you why medical storytelling actually works. Thank you so much, Philippe. So how do we know medical storytelling works? Think of it this way. If we attend a presentation with boring bullet points, only a portion of the brain is stimulating, hitting just the language processing parts, where we decode words into meaning. And that's it. Nothing else happens. Yet when hearing a story, things do change dramatically. Not only are the language processing parts of the brain triggered, but many other areas as well. It's really interesting to think of it this way. The brain doesn't distinguish between hearing about an experience and encountering it in real life. Because in each case, the same neurological regions are stimulated. That's why scary movies make you jump and sad movies make you cry. Medical storytelling for healthcare audiences is no different. And that's because people see and hear facts, but they feel a story. I know it sounds simple, but we only need to look back through history to see the impact that stories have had on shaping our lives, how we live them, why we live them, and what it means to be human. We know that powerful narratives speak to the heart, guiding us into action. Studies of human psychology have found that if we're told something through a story, we're much more likely to relate to that message, absorbing it further, and really remaining engaged from start to finish. And the great thing is that science actually confirms this. We know that storytelling begins in the brain, 
And data triggers two specific areas only, but storytelling affects many more areas in overlapping ways. We know that our brains are much more fully activated if we listen to stories. And why is that? Why does the format of a story, where the events unfold one after the other, can have such a profound effect and impact on our learning? The simple answer is this, we are wired this way. A story is broken down into the simplest form. It's really a connection of cause and effect, and that's exactly how we think. We do think in narratives all day long, whether about buying groceries, at a work meeting, or even your kid's soccer game. In fact, personal stories make up 65% of our conversations. So how do we connect the science of storytelling to the practice of storytelling? We start with facts to frame the message and finish it with emotion to sustain it. And now I'm going to turn it back toward, to Todd, who's really going to share a real life experience so you can see how it all begins and how it works. Thanks, Susan. So I bet many of you are sitting out there thinking, okay, makes sense. I kind of see it. But how does all this play out in real life? So bear with me for a few minutes. I'd love to share a real example in the endometriosis therapeutic area. So what is endometriosis? It's an extremely painful disorder that occurs when the endometrial lining grows outside of the uterus. It affects women of childbearing age. It takes an average of nine years for women to be diagnosed with endometriosis. Unfortunately, the journey is filled with many misdiagnoses or nothing at all resulting in one-fifth of women consulting with five or more physicians. And that's where many presentations stop. Does this scene look familiar? I know it does to me. I remember several years ago before joining Avant, attending speaker trainings on the brand side, our speaker programs on the brand side, and this is what the, the program would look like. Um, but this is, what medical, this is what medical education looks like without medical storytelling. It's a series of data points applied to a PowerPoint template. And, and while the data is important and impactful on its own, it's certainly not very memorable in this format. So what we do is we take the data and we humanize it. We turn it into something more than just a bullet point on the slide. So what does that look like? Well, any good story starts with a strong narrative consisting of a main character. Medical storytelling is no different. In this example, our main character is the target patient, a woman with endometriosis. Once we have the target patient, we also ask ourselves, what's causing the conflict and what's the resolution? Jane represents our main character. Notice how relatable she is. Her facial expression clearly communicates the anguish she's suffering internally, giving her long journey with this uh, very painful disease. Once we establish the main character, we need to put her in a setting that helps tell her story. Women with endometriosis feel like no one listens to them. They're in pain and they can't find out, a, uh, can't find out why. The creative team chooses, chose a direct and ominous background that really lets the viewer feel Jane's isolation. The bleak setting conveys a sense of urgency for Jane. When we take this a step further by darkening the background a bit more, the mood gets darker. Jane hasn't been able to get answers, and she's feeling despair. She feels very vulnerable. The viewer responds to the visual cues we're showing them. The darker background lets them feel Jane's despair. They get a sense of connection to Jane and her struggle with endometriosis. By adding the title, Break the Silence, the elusive and progressive nature of endometriosis, endometriosis powerfully tells the story, putting a physical barrier between Jane's need to speak and her ability to be heard. Jane loses her voice completely. The urgency and desperation intensify. The text and visual presentation work together to show the pain that endometriosis caused. We want Jane's silence to end so that her pain will end. It's a call to action for both physicians as well as patients. This is a powerful example of how medical storytelling fuses strategy, science, and creativity to create a memorable impression in the viewer's minds by using both science or using science as the foundation, but then also 
the creativity to tell the story. It humanizes the data so that it tells this compelling story in a way that we can all relate. The kind of story that audiences respond to and remember, the kind of story that changes behaviors, and that's what we're here to do, help you change the behaviors of your customers. We can do this both in live presentations as well as weaving medical storytelling through a range of materials shared, shared across many different channels. So at the end of the day, you're trying to change customer behavior. Medical storytelling enables you to do this by humanizing your brand while differentiating it from the competitors to deliver powerful messages that your customer will not only remember, but more importantly, act on. We like to say medical storytelling brings a lot more life to life sciences. It works and it's making a big difference in how medical education happens and how well it happens. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Dan and see if there are any uh, questions from the audience. Thank you. It is time for our Q&A session and it's always a very popular segment of our web seminars. The first question is for Philippe. And uh, the, this audience member wants to know what goes into the strategy part of the process that you discussed. So we, we really start with uh, what our clients uh, know about their customers, their competitors, and the disease state that uh, we'll be addressing and tackling. Um, you know, we work with uh, both internal and external uh, stakeholders, um, you know, uh, so both on the teams, KOLs, uh, to fill in the gaps, so any gaps that uh, there is in knowledge, and then we probe to find uh, what behavior changes we we want to inspire and we want to we want to affect. Uh, you know, we put together a document that summarizes all that information and identifies uh, where our clients can have the greatest impact, and um, and then we collaborate with them to to fine tune it. Um, and, and all of that leads into the work uh, of our medical and creative teams. Excellent. Okay, Todd, the next one is for you. The image you shared about the endometriosis sufferer, it focused on unpleasant feelings. And the, uh, the question is, wouldn't optimistic presentations go further or be more effective? Wow, that's a really good question. Yeah, so I think, um, in any good story, there's got to be conflict, right? And so in our realm, people are often in conflict with their bodies and, and, and even with how the people treat and how people treat them. So uh, Jane um, hasn't been heard, right? So she's been suffering for a while. Remember the data said she's probably been undiagnosed for nine years. Um, and probably, she's probably been, you know, funneled to the system and seen, you know, up to five different physicians along her journey. So, um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to convey that conflict um, so that we're telling her story in the way that she would like for her story to be heard. Um, so when you see it, you can't help but want to make things better for her, right? Um, which makes you much, much more receptive to the data that we're going to wrap around Jane and, and the visual uh, creative depiction. So I think um, while we, 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 it may feel negative on the outside, it really is, uh, the intent is to get that, um, get that emotional connection to Jane so that when we tell the clinical um, aspects of the disease of endometriosis and share those brand attributes, um, that, uh, you know, it really connects with Jane for the audience to remember that data post-event. Post Excellent. Okay, Susan, here's one for you. Are okay. there cases where data and story don't mix? Well, I love that question. So um, I think the reason I love the question is there's a lot that goes on in the brain that's a little bit below the surface, regardless of who your audience is. So my answer at first would be data and story always mix. Because there's always a way to bring a human element into medical information. There's always a theme to carry through. We work in that in creative all day long. We come up with a theme that wraps a story around medical data because we know, as we've already talked about, how that humanizes the data and creates an engaging, memorable presentation. And the, and the thinking and the ideas around the data do end up sticking with your audience. And what's even more interesting is that people don't have to be consciously open to story for its power to work. So even someone who thinks, I just want the data, you know, they're just, just 
give me the facts, so to speak. Um, they have all the same physical and chemical reactions we talked about. Their brains light up from stories. It's just a fact. There's science to back it up. And they do remember the data better because of it. So I would say there's, there's really some, uh, you know, strong scientific um, information that backs up the fact is that it does always mix and makes, makes for a better experience. Excellent. Philippe, I'm going to direct this one to you. This audience member is fascinated by the idea of the brain receiving story differently. Can you talk more about how that works? Yeah, that's a great question, good question as well. Um, you know, all it really means when we tell you that uh, different areas of the brain are activated is that you can ex really experience the story, uh, like literally physiologically. So, for instance, uh, a biological process called uh, neural coupling takes uh, what comes in, so it's the story in this case, and connects connects it to uh, the listener's own experiences and ideas. So, uh, you know, interestingly enough, this happens for the person telling the story uh, as well as the person hearing it, uh, which gives them, you know, further connection. Um, when we experience emotion, uh, even from uh, someone else's story, uh, the brain releases, you know, a neurotransmitter that, uh, you know, that we call dopamine, and uh, that helps us uh, really remember the, the, the experience. So all of this neuroscience uh, backs up what successful writers, speakers, and marketers, uh, you know, have always intuited. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why we always uh, react to great stories. Thanks, Philippe. Okay, uh, Susan, here's one for you. Okay. Uh, the audience member says, isn't, isn't this just gilding the lily? People want the data, whether it comes in a pretty package or not, and it seems like the stories might get in the way. Do you agree or disagree with this? I would say I would disagree because um, I don't believe that stories get in the way, and I think it, it does sort of piggyback back off of my other answer to that first question um, because the data are the reason all of us do what we do. We know it's what guides medical decision-making, and we also know that it helps patients lead better lives. It's just that there are big differences in how that data reaches people. And we want it to reach them and stick in their minds. And medical storytelling happens to be the vehicle through which that happens. Um, you know, think of it this way. You can survive on meal replacement mixes, but the experience of drinking that shake isn't anywhere near the kind of experience that's going to allow it to linger in your brain. But I bet you can probably think of 100 great meals you've shared with people you love and that's the crux of what we're doing here. We're making the meal, packaging information, so that it becomes an experience. If nobody remembers the data, patients aren't served. And I think this is becoming a theme. I think Philippe really uh, spoke to this from a, through a different lens. But, you know, the idea of experience is, I think, the key message here, that if you can get your audience to experience the data, it's going to become something that they can, that, that forces them to take action and to create mem a memorable experience. Excellent, thanks, Susan. And Todd, we have one for you. How do you measure th the success of these projects? Well, that's a good question too. I mean, um, you know, um, we always want to put together a, you know, a, a metrics plan for everything that we do. Um, and the best way to do this um, for medical storytelling is really evaluating, um, uh, both from a quant and qual perspective, the impact the slide deck is having on your audience. We can do this from you know, speaker and attendee evaluations. We can also pulse, you know, internal stakeholders that are um, exposed to the content as well. Um, you know, we partner with our clients also to, you know, use their own data and, um, you know, monitor, to monitor changes in prescribing habits in different areas um, as it relates to, you know, the rollout of new, new content uh, as it, um, that involves medical storytelling. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, Susan, let's go back to you. Is okay. using a hypothetical patient the only storytelling technique you use? Uh, and the, the audience member says, I see this often in the industry. Are there any other ways to use storytelling in this way that would stand out more? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a number of ways to look at this. Um, we've done it both ways where possible. Sometimes 
Um, the challenge is getting permission and going through sort of the, the lengthy approval process. So sometimes we introduce the story by using a hypothetical patient just in kind of framing the story. Then as we get into the data slides, that's when we introduce actual patients. So the data is supporting a real-life patient journey with real real-life statistics that help to really exemplify the story that we're telling. But in terms of, you know, theming it from the beginning of the story to the end, we kind of like go a little bit higher level in terms of just kind of approaching it from um, a broader based patient who might represent a wider demographic group or a wider population group. But then the data do get, you know, data sites do get a lot more specific and that's when we would usually introduce a real patient. Perfect. All right, Todd, let's move on to you. If you start weaving in medical storytelling into your slide decks, how do you prepare your speakers to adapt their presentation style to follow suit? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, that sometimes can be a challenge, right? So one of the best practices we found is first, it's, it's helping our speakers become better storytellers. So during speaker training is really um, we, we step outside of the content and, um, and, and help our speakers really um, think about how they're delivering the content in a different way. Um, so, you know, tone, inflection, things like that, super important. The more the softer skills um, that go into um, presenting, um, presenting the story. Um, now, we also, if you notice the example that we use with endometriosis, right? Um, we really didn't get into the, the heavy content slide. So we would prefer the, uh, the, the emotion to come from the visual, the creative wrapper that, that, um, that the creative team puts around this. So we're trying to take as much of the, the emotional component of telling the story away from our speakers um, and let it just be a natural influence, with, um, a natural influence to, um, to, to our audience. Um, so that's kind of the two ways we, we, we partner with our, with our teams to make sure that our speakers are able to deliver our content and medical storytelling in an impactful way. All right, very good. All right, I think we've got one that kind of dovetails back to something Susan uh, addressed before. Um, how do you deliberately use tension and, and how does that relate to context? Well, I think that especially in the example that we showed today, um, tension between sort of the protagonist and a story that, you know, creates, sets up sort of a challenge, a problem to be solved. So I think that tension keeps you, the audience engaged, keeps you motivated to kind of um, stay with us through the whole presentation. We know that there's going to, we're going to dip a little bit somewhat out of story to go into sort of the data points, but there's going to be a continuity, sort of a woven theme that keeps the tension tight so your audience is continuing to want to know what's going to happen next. It's that sequence of events. All right, excellent. So we are going to um, call an end to the Q&A session, but I encourage you to contact our experts after the webinar. Uh, they would definitely love to hear from you uh, and talk in greater detail about anything you've heard today on this topic. So if you still have a question or comment, just send them an email and use the address on the screen. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this event and have taken away some new insights. I'd like to once again thank our friends at Avant Healthcare for partnering with us on a great event. Uh, I'm gonna throw it back to Todd for some final words of wisdom. Todd, what do you wanna leave the audience with today? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Thanks for the time, everyone, for joining us today. Um, I do want to just say in closing, you know, medical storytelling um, is something that we've been doing here for many, many years. And it's something that um, uh, can definitely change uh, the way you deliver your content to your, to your audiences. So when, when considering that refresh of a, of a slide deck or when considering the next medical, medical education project you're kicking off, really think about how you can marry data um, the science with with strategy, what we know about the brand and the competitive set as well as the marketplace, um, with the creative to tell that story in a much more impactful way. Because like I said earlier, you had the best data in the world, um, but the data really is, is only as good as it can be remembered, right? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Todd, Susan, and Philippe. That was a great presentation, and uh, we handled 
some very interesting questions. If you like this type of webinar, I encourage you to look for future webinars like this by visiting pharmavoice.com. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. The event is now over.